Hello and welcome to this edition of Crossover. I'm Ji Xiaojun. Hello from Beijing. I'm Louise Li. And today we're going to talk about the favorite topic. Yes, food. It's food. <laughs> yes. Do you do you cook at all? You know, I try because I know it's a healthy way, but、um, I'm not. I'm a terrible cook, so. That's like the correct answer.、Yeah. It's the right way. I, I it's try.、Healthier. I try. When I have time, I try. Okay.、Uh, but I do dine out quite a bit, and I do order food delivery quite a bit, and I'm a bit guilty about that. So it's more eating out, or it's more about delivery. Ordering food. Okay. <laughs> How about yourself? Same here. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about this. Is basically a new phenomenon. This since like I don't know, last two three years. This is almost a whole generation. Right. Is living on this new lifestyle, ever call it a new lifestyle? And I guess we want to talk about like you know Chinese millennials' gastronomic preferences, what they really like, yeah, and, and what kind of food they like, and why are they dining out. No, I'm、know? saying well to prove you're young enough. Yeah, you have to order. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're not joined in the studio by Daniel. Hello, from Canada.、Uh, was a business consultant for a long time, and now I run a small business with my wife and take care of my two kids. Okay, we have. Yeah. I am actually Hong Kong born, but was raised in Canada as well. Now I'm working in Shanghai、uh, in a restaurant called Bo Shanghai. Then we have Rachel. Hi, I'm Rachel. I'm from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, and I am a food and beverage consultant and writer in Shanghai. Yeah, so, do you get your food delivered? Probably four times、step? a week, four or five <laughs> times a week. That's not much. Yeah, <laughs> even here, in front of、here. my computer,、um, answering a phone call and. Or maybe I'm on the way home and I'm in the taxi. I, I make my、now. order. Oh yes. Right. And it's home right in front of the door. Oh yes. As I arrive. Yeah. It's so convenient. When you're in, stuck in traffic, you're like, oh boy, what do I want to eat for dinner? Exactly.、Yeah. <laughs> exactly. As a consultant, I'm sure you've noticed this phenomenon. What is happening? With delivery. Delivery service. You know, you can order all kinds of food on, on the way back to your home. Right. So who are ordering these delivery services now? If you know how to use WeChat, chances are you know how to use all the big. Delivery apps like Ulama. Yeah. They have photos for everything. They have GPS tracking. Yes. Saving all the addresses where you need it delivered to. It has reminders for when the deals come up. You have you can put money in. You know you can buy coupons. You can deliver it to any address, no matter where you are. You can order in advance. I mean, sky's the limit. Daniel.、Uh, years and years ago,、uh, I was so excited about how convenient it is to go. To eat at restaurants in my neighborhood, we, I've got hundreds of great restaurants. So my wife and I did dine out a lot. But、mm. then,、uh, as we,、uh, we we aged,、uh, we found it's、uh, we, we we actually both like cooking too. So now it's probably a lot more cooking at home than it is、uh, ordering out. Dial, do、Hi. you use actually delivery service at all? Because you are a chef yourself. The ones in China was it is amazing. I am when I first arrived in Shanghai. And and learned about these apps, like they call APP. I was like, you mean apps? No, APP. I was like, okay, APP. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, my my staff was very keen on correcting me on that. So APP.、Um, and there is a lot. There is ones that are very geared for Western guests or Western diners, and then there are ones entirely based off of Chinese food. And then there's hot pot ones, and there's so much variety, and they're so fast. Rainy day, cold day. Uh, Chinese holiday, any day that you need food and you cannot get access by going out. And then it's also a lot of variety. You、yeah. know, you, if you want to cook yourself, you can you can't have all these ingredients to cook like different meals. But you can get, you know, I don't know, you can get pizza from here, you can get baozi from here, you、mm. know, buns, Chinese. Buns. So you can get different varieties of food the, at the same time. The question to you then is it healthy? Hmm. hmm. What is that? <laughs> What is that? I don't know. I don't. I don't. I think it was 1999. I ordered pizza through the Pizza Hut website、oh, with a credit card,、uh -huh. and they delivered it to me. And that was back in Canada. So, from a technological standpoint, we're not looking at a tremendous amount of innovation. What we are seeing is a confluence of many factors、um, meeting at, at, a, at a strategic point where the timing is just right for something like this to blow up、uh, and get very popular. I remember years ago, before we had Meituan and Ulama and Baidu Wai Mai,、um, you, you get to know certain restaurants in your neighborhood that you like. You get the owner's phone number, like the small, like mom and pop restaurants. Exactly. You don't know what's on their menu unless you take it. Or you dine there the, enough. Or you dine there enough. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> from this one particular restaurant, I, I think I ordered Paigu Mi Fan about a, about a thousand <laughs> times because it was so good. The, the owner just doesn't even know. He, he looks at my number and he goes, "Hey, Daniel, 
and like yeah, well, <laughs> you've never even I'm like met the usual, please. Oh yeah, yeah, I go in there. I used to go in right, there, and now right. they, they, they would they wouldn't make the switch over to the platform because the platform was charging them too much money. That's mm. right. And then like a year ago, I called them, and they they were, they were gone. And I'm uh, mm. devastated. I'd okay. just like to add to yeah. that though. In addition to delivery in general. If you are not, as a restaurant, on delivery, if you're a restaurant that can do delivery and you're not on delivery, it's like almost like you don't exist. It's like you don't have a website. But that right. is what is happening. A third exactly. party, party platform like Meituan, they are doing the delivery services for literally all right. the restaurants. Yeah. You will sell a lot more, though, I think. Yeah. So you got to make sure well, that you have the Yeah, that's the dilemma you have to face. You, know, yeah. you have to think about but I mean, if it comes back to the lifestyle thing, I would like to show you a video uh, mm. to show you how the lifestyle has been changing for some living in the cities. Take a look. Hi, my name is Isabel. I am a Chinese Canadian. Delivery probably plays a huge part of my life. Uh, being a full-time white collar, I have very little time to prepare food for myself. So I probably order delivery on average twice a day, um, lunch and dinner most likely. I've been in this new apartment for about half a year and I still haven't connected my stove. <laughs> this for dinner? Wow, look at that beef. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. Let's order this tonight, okay? I think almost every single restaurant you can name is on delivery. So um, there's nothing really you can't order. Anything you think of, you can probably find it on the delivery apps. Hey girl, what's up? Oh, I'm just at home with the little guy. What are you doing? Uh, actually, I just found this really cool restaurant near my house and um, they have delivery. Do you want to come over? We can grab some delivery and watch a movie together. Alright, great. See you soon. I can order if I'm craving something, say I'm craving a pasta at 2 a.m., I probably can get that. You saw this on the internet. Mm-hmm. It's got really good reviews, so. How much is this? Mm, about 30 RMB. Oh my god. Mm -hmm. So now order it like So that's um, what is the the life look like? Mm -hmm. yeah. She has some fancy pots. I mean. They can order everything. Yeah. The thing is, I mean, it's only happening in the past three, four years time, and. Mm -hmm. 
we have to talk about the reasons behind it. Why is now this is the uh, the pattern, the lifestyle being accepted, and uh, yeah. and also not only by the customers but also by the whole industry? Or what do you think? Are the reasons? Three main reasons are extremely easy micro payments or mobile payments with uh, WeChat Pay and uh, Triple Bow and um, and Apple Pay. Um, huge amount of capital dumped into the platforms uh, probably four or five years ago, developing them and getting them, uh, scaling them to the point where you can reach all of China essentially. The in the O2O yeah. strategy. Yeah, yeah. and uh, so the, the, develop, the rapid development of the platforms. And the third thing is the development of, um, uh, well, it's lithium ion battery technology basically because they're all driving uh, electric motorcycles. Mm -hmm. the, these three things, like you can get on a, an e-bike and you can drive with a full charge, you can drive maybe 60 or 70 kilometers in a day. Uh, but what they do is they, there's, there's stations all over the city where they can quickly swap them out. So uh, we have like really high capacity electric uh, motor, uh, motorcycles and we have um, investors that are totally willing to dump billions into these apps to get them, to get, to get them uh, distributed as quickly as possible. Oh, I forgot one more thing. Um, young people can come into the city and get a job and get a thousand quite signing bonus some, with some companies sometimes and then they can make uh, a lot more money than they'd make on the farm. So the availability of labor that's willing to do this. Why is that happening in China and not in other countries? China is the best functioning cashless society. Everything's online, online payment, and that's really what's propelling the delivery system to work. There's one interjection I have. We've been using credit cards for, for uh, cashless payments in the West for a really long time. Mm. And in the West, what you do is in, for, I don't know how many, long, or how, how many decades, but you'd phone a restaurant, give them your credit card number, and then mm. they'd charge it. Yeah. and then they'd send it to you. So we don't, right. th th that's another reason everyone's used to doing it that way. So if I go back to Canada now, I've been using, I've been using Tarun uh, Gamping and I, the QR yeah. code. I've, I've been using uh, mobile payments for so long. Yeah. I go back to Canada and at first it's inconvenient. Oh my God, I got to carry cash. And then I go, oh yeah, credit card. It's the same thing. Yeah, but right? credit card, you have to have a credit check. That is the problem. So it means you have to be a responsible person. Exactly. In those, right? yeah. So Alipay is, or, or all these uh, payment apps are bound to your bank account. So if your bank don't have the money, you can't, you can't pay with it. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so you're, yeah. it's a different type of mentality. I remember yeah. when I was young, when I first got my credit card, I spend, spend, spend without even knowing how much I used. <laughs> and then when that the bill comes, you're call. like, oh my god, you know. Uh -oh. Mm -hmm. Like luckily, I had a job back then that was able to. I thought you called your father. Yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I was very self-sustained, but um, it, 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 it was a little different because I totally agree with you. Yeah, yeah. But I do find that I was, be I'm better now at financial management than when I was using a credit card system, because I am literally monitoring the changes in my bank account yeah. at all times. Are there any, any concerns that you might have about this phenomenon? Yes, most certainly. I think when we think about the convenience of delivery, I mean, making our lives easier is definitely what it does. But if you think like that lady, she, she orders food twice a day and her food comes in a Tupperware, which comes in a plastic bag. Her chopsticks or her utensils are probably plastic or in plastic packaging. And you think of that number multiplied by millions and you will have an idea of what amount of waste is currently being generated. Mm. The point I'm trying to make is, one, can restaurants or can businesses be more mindful of that and opt for a different kind of packaging, so something that's more biodegradable, mm. paper. Mm. There are lots of places that are looking for that. Uh, to change their way yeah. of delivery, mm -hmm. though very few? Or two, should we try to be more conscious about the waste that it causes and perhaps go down, mm -hmm. eat from an actual porcelain mm -hmm. bowl right. and hopefully save that plastic? I mean, I mean, I agree with you. I, I always feel very guilty when I order takeout. <laughs> no, I do. And sometimes I give out the, you know, they, they come in different boxes. I, sometimes I give them back the, yeah. the other box, the big box that I don't use. And they were like, huh? I'm like, oh, you can use it again. They're like, okay. I don't <laughs> want to carry them back to my <laughs> restaurant. <either. laughs> but then also, I always, always say no um, utensils, for instance, because yeah. I know I have my own utensils. I always yeah. put on, you know, you can put a note. Yes, right. right. Yeah. Note. No utensils. I'm recycling friendly or I'm very green or something. I make a note like that. Yeah. And they still forget because they, they don't, really, they don't yeah. really look. This is yeah. more like a pattern they, they're yeah. so used to. And this yeah. is the format they, they mm. work. But, but it, it's definitely a concern. Um, you can work as hard as you can to make reusable packaging, but there's just a lot of Chinese food that just does not work well 
Hmm. Uh, it, it's hard to deliver without using plastic Soup. containers. Like imagine a big dongbei stew or like sun tai or something. How are you going to put that in paper? We put men on moons. Like on the moon. we, we, can, we can do this. <laughs> it, it, it takes people to be more aware of the problem. Yes. And then exactly. somebody who cares enough will always go find a solution. And that solution becomes the future. So it's, it's great that we're here voicing that problem. Yeah. Then somebody... Maybe an eight-year-old one day will see this and like, I'm inspired to make something that can hold Dongbei stew. <laughs> right? Exactly. Right? You, we never know. We really never you know. Never know. Yeah, we, we, we just should, have we to should form a research But program. at least yes. one solution for now is yeah. go eat in the restaurant. Right. For sure. For sure. In the Michigan restaurant. <laughs> yes, come to dine at restaurants, right? <laughs> I have another concern, which is, you know, when we're ordering all these food, we're eating by ourselves, right? So mm. at the same time, I feel like we're taking away that social time with other people. Cool. Do you do, do, you you do, do you live streaming. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I feel like it's kind of sad. You're, you're ordering the food. I'm ordering, like, you know. What are you complaining about? I'm sitting <laughs> at home by myself when you could be out eating with friends. Yeah. So convenience also is also taking away your, your chance to socialize you with people. You win something or lose something. But you right. get to watch TV That's while you sure. eat. Though, you know? Right. <laughs> Again, what do you think is going to happen in the future when the labor cost is going to go up, when the regulations are going to be yeah. adopted, yeah. and then but what's going to happen? Uh, when it becomes uneconomical to do a distributed uh, uh, platform-based model where you have independent drivers being contracted to go to different restaurants, yeah. you'll have the, the, there will emerge like a hub and spoke system, kind of like what we see with Huma right now. You have to explain to our viewers right. what is Huma Fresh. Uh, Huma means hippo, and it's, it's a grocery store concept backed by Alibaba. And they, they've consolidated uh, the, the distribution and retail with the O2O -O delivery. So they operate as a hub in a, in a neighborhood. So they'll actually build a physical location. All their drivers are based out of that spot. And you can order groceries and prepared foods through their app, pr their proprietary app. They're taking good care of their drivers. They're not making the drivers drive illegal bikes. Uh, they can hit the volume be be because they have the three kilometer radius. They can hit the volume that makes it economically possible. And, uh, and, and, and users can get anything from groceries mm. to prepared foods. So, mate, mm. like the current model, I see it as unsustainable because uh, once, once regulation is properly enforced and once the workers are properly uh, protected, then the economics of cheap delivery are gone. So your, your 20 quai bowl of noodles is now a 40 quai bowl of noodles. And so now it's like maybe I should go downstairs to, and go across the street to the, to the store and get it my, myself instead mm. of being lazy. So there's still niche areas that, that are still worth paying a, a bigger delivery fee mm -hmm. for. Like, uh, this, this hot pot thing, there's a, a restaurant, that Heidi Lau restaurant. If you have a group of friends and you don't want to go to the restaurant, you can actually order the entire setup and they bring staff over to your house and they do I the entire concept this. right on your dining table. And I think you just told me that they also have a spray when they're done. Yeah. I, don't, I don't remember seeing that, but oh, my family... Spray, because yeah. it smells in the house. And yes. they have yeah. to feel, Ooh, they have wow. that? Yeah. So that's all, the like, these niche things are always going to be worth paying the extra mm. for because you just can't do it yourself. Again, this is the talk about different business models. But if you come back to the reasons behind it, the girl did mention she's too busy to cook. Sir. Instead of, you know, preparing my lunch for work the night before, I'm mm. probably yeah, cause coming home really late. Yeah, because I was thinking really the same late. thing. Like, people in the States, they also prepare their own food. Everyone gets up around the same time, 9 to 5, right? That's the usual working hours. It's not like they get off earlier and they have time to cook. Yeah. I think it's the same thing. Like, you prep in advance, mm -hmm. maybe the day before, or you cook more and you do two meals. Ch Chinese I think food, uh, the prep is a lot. Like if you want to make a chow right. thai, it's like a lot of prep. In America, you make a sandwich. But you know, cooking is quick, meat, huh? cheese, <laughs> bread. <laughs> not, not, for yeah. not for dinner. I yeah. mean, right? Oh, okay, all right. My, my reasoning for why that everyone claims to not have time and have to rely on delivery service is because we have a lot more to attract our attention away from. Mm. When I was young, I have free time. I would read a book or I would sit and talk with my parents. There, there is always times when you're not doing things or not occupied by other things. But nowadays people are occupied all the time mm. at, by a lot of technologies, you know? Yeah. When I'm free, I use the phone to do something uh, or I watch a t v TV show. They would rather use the phone and watch a TV show or whatever <laughs> or not. It's, they're always mm. using every waking moment to be occupied by something. Mm -hmm. and then, because of that, then now they consider I have no time. Yeah, yeah it's hard to watch like, TV. I would rather, <laughs> exactly, you, you cannot, yeah. right? You're going to cut yourself for sure. Yeah. You know, especially I see my staff like, using a phone, like, what are, what are you doing? Put it down. 
you should be cutting, not watching something. You know? <laughs> That's but like a legitimate reason, <laughs> excuse. But people do prioritize their yeah. needs in a different way. They find that watching that show you know, today is more important than me preparing the meal for tomorrow. Mm. Then, then mm. now there's all these other excuses. Yeah, we, we forgot to mention that a lot of people live in an environment where they, they don't actually have a kitchen, and so right. cooking is not actually That an kitchen was well, kind yes. of an, an open yeah. kitchen. You know, you know, I agree to that because as yeah. a city dweller, as someone who lives in the city, you don't have a big <coughs> kitchen. You don't have a big apartment with a, no. a full-on full -on kitchen oven and everything. So you're limited to what you can cook. So mm. maybe that's, that's also There's a contributing also, yes. factor as well. Mm, for sure. I, I'm thinking more like the people that rent one room in a multi-room oh, okay. unit. If you're like from the countryside, and you come, like a YD, and you come to work in Beijing, Oftentimes, you rent one bedroom and you share a bathroom and you don't even have a kitchen. So how are you supposed to cook? You could, you could get a hot plate maybe, but that's not, that's mm. not very convenient. Yeah. So then these guys have no choice. It's either street food or it's why mine. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, uh, that's also a, a lifestyle being uh, welcomed and, you know, by a lot because it is convenient and mm -hmm. for now it's still cheap, relatively speaking. Mm. Yeah. And uh, do you also offer uh, delivery services too? We we don't do delivery. <laughs> <laughs> no. It's it's impossible, first of all, to have that amount of food to be delivered. That's right. And on top of that is the quality of it. Mm -hmm. uh, we we will are uh, we're very respectful of what we do, uh -huh. and, uh, um, and we don't want to deliver not the full experience, experience yeah. to the guest. You know. Uh, the temperature is off, exactly, or the, yeah. the, the plating is no longer, yes. you can't take pictures with uh, it. Right. Right. What happened, mm -hmm. right? So right. only when you dine in the restaurants, you can take pictures mm -hmm. of the environment, of your partners who you're dining with, and of the food in front of you. You mentioned a very interesting part, taking pictures. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one term, in English probably, Instagrammable uh, yeah. restaurant. Mm -hmm. or Photogenic, uh, right? Oh, and uh, in Chinese, and uh, there is another term we call it the Wang Hong restaurant. <laughs> We're going to have a discussion about that, and so let's take a break and let's move on. And still about food, but different topic. We'll be right back. Stay with us. Welcome back to the studio and look at all these great dessert in front of Absolutely us. Absolutely stunning. Uh, where did they just come from? <laughs> from delivery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> delivery service in, yes. The, in the catering business. Well, the thing is, how do you pick a restaurant? I ask friends. For okay. me, it's word of mouth. Sometimes I look for, you know, social media or I look on, on the internet, look for restaurants. Exactly. And I read up on the reviews. But do you also, I mean, as a chef in the Michelin restaurant, do you follow the reviews and follow like a we Wang Hong review? We do follow reviews because sometimes um, we get very accurate or very um, uh, direct um, reviews from guests of their experience in the restaurants. And every day it changes, you know, every guest that comes in has a different opinion. And it's always good to keep up, uh, especially for myself coming from a different country in the first place. We have to learn the culture here. Oh, no. You mean your own restaurant? Yes. But as a diner, if you go out to eat, I have the luxury of having people from the industry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I, I ah. talk to so them. So you know where to go eat. <laughs> inside right? reference, yes. you know, inside information yes. like Rachel. And Rachel <laughs> just goes to every place, right? Yeah. <laughs> but Daniel, uh, I would say, listen to your wife. <laughs> <laughs> Her instincts are pretty keen usually. When right. We, we don't go off out as much as we as we used to, but in the past, when things like. Um, uh, when, they, when these platforms were first coming out, it was kind of useful to see the, the reviews. The way I feel is that if, if, if someone who's internet famous is reviewing a restaurant, there's a good chance they probably got paid. <laughs> Maybe. Uh, Rachel? So, <laughs> hold on, hold wrong. on. Repeat that. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is most likely, but yeah. then it's sort of like that uh, snowball effect. Like, I want to become like a person. I want to become a Wang Hong, so I have to go to all the Wang Hong places to build up my rep repertoire of Wang Hong posts. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. So it sort of like snowballs into this, you know, mutant thing that we now have Wang Hong restaurants. Yeah. I mean, what started off as a very uh, plausible idea of how to do marketing for your restaurant is like to do something that will catch the pers like people's mm. eyeballs, right? Mm. That's what essentially everyone wants, is to get more people into their store. But from a good idea, there are a lot of bad ideas. So like, 
And there, there are a lot of crazy ideas. For example, like this bar called Twinkle in Shanghai, they have their entrance to this bar is a luggage carousel. You sit on a luggage carousel slowly but surely into a bar. No, right? Yeah, cool. it, it is. Kind of a uh, grand I always wanted to sit on one of those things. <laughs> <laughs> they don't point. let you at the airport. There used to be a kind of a prison-themed restaurant of Beijing. Yes. Did you hear the toilet restaurant? And the toilet <laughs> restaurant, <laughs> I've heard about. They make curry, right? Yeah. Yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. We can't <laughs> stop that. I mean, it just seems right. that there are a lot of these, you know, internet, internet little viral, internet sensational restaurants in, in, in China. Anyway, uh, Louise and I, we went to a kind of, uh, if there are Wang Hong restaurant or not, but they're famous among diners mm. in Beijing. And they're also famous online as well? Also famous online too. And this restaurant is very unique. It's not like a modern restaurant. It's more like you are traveling back in time. Louisa, we have a mission to accomplish and here they are. We are on a quest. Ooh. What's in here? The mission card. Wow. Head to Beijing restaurant. Check out Imperial Chinese cuisine. Okay, check out Imperial Culture. Capture your favorite moment and post it on social media. I'm sure we can do that. Yeah, that's not too hard. Let's go. Let's go. Dun -dun. Dun -dun -dun -dun. <laughs> oh, so. What happened to us? Well, I'm the Empress, and you're... I'm the Emperor. Obviously, right? Well, this is Baijia restaurant, but somehow we're here experiencing the royal culture, the imperial culture. Exactly. I mean, look at my headpiece. Massive headpiece. Wait, 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 wait. It's, yeah, you have to... You how, don't... How do you like it? I think I feel quite important and fancy. Where's your headpiece? Um, I'm the Empress, so I can choose not to do anything <laughs> if I don't like it. Right, exactly. <laughs> I don't want to ruin my hairstyles. Oh, so what are we going to do today? Today we'll be fully experiencing the imperial culture like you mentioned. Mm. And how is it to be like an emperor and to be like an empress? So shall we just go check it out? Yeah. Empress? Yes. You got to slow down a little bit. Ancient clogs on. <laughs> hey, Empress, yes. behave yourself. <laughs> I'll try. <laughs> Hello back and all the best wishes Hello. back to you too. Yes. It will be a part of the nice experience if the diners, you know, have a special meal here. Quite an experience, huh? Very mm. interesting. Nice. We'll do a selfie, yeah? Oh, let's yeah, do it. Let's do, do it. You in there? Your best pose? All right. I'm going to post that <laughs> on my social media. You might? Okay, let's do it. All right, yeah, let's do let's it. Do yeah? it. Is good and have a cup of tea and some snacks. Yeah, and some tea, stuff. dessert. It would be really nice, like you said, if this was summertime and you have a bit of the breeze and the water is really nice. Yeah, I like to take this one. Okay, this is all Beijing dessert, right? Yeah. Traditional mm. Beijing dessert. Mm. I'm gonna go for this one. Cheers. Cheers. At mm. least we have some hot tea here. And. Empress Louisa? Yes. They even have downs here. This is my garden. Welcome to well, my. Absolutely. Little, this is your home. Yeah, my little imperial garden. It's time for another yeah. selfie. Your hat is a my little bit. My hat is blocking, blocking them. Yes. Here we go. Yes. <laughs> uh, with you in it. With you. Okay, Mia. Me and my girls.
Now we're going to have some calligraphy practice. Now this is very interesting because as a customer here at this restaurant, you can actually practice calligraphy. Are you writing in English? Oh, yes. Is that a different technique if you write in English? No, basically the same thing. My parents wanted to force me into practicing calligraphy. And how's that doing? With no success. <laughs> <laughs> so you go ahead. So from crossover, I would be happy something. All right. Come on, you're making it worse. I know. So, um, it's a bit helpless, isn't it? Hmm. You sure you want me to do this? <laughs> yeah, do the shang. Okay, I'll sign my name as well. That is good. Anyway, good or bad, yeah. it's done. All right. Let's take a picture. Happy weekend from Crossover. So well, this is bad calligraphy, I have to say. <laughs> had this before, I've seen the performance like this before, but never this close. And still, you still can't figure out how he did it. It's a magic show. Yeah, it is indeed. Chinese magic show. Even more magical is the dessert. Right, and yeah. Shall we <laughs> go ahead now? But the thing is, our guests are still waiting at the studio. They so can shall wait we? for a little bit more, right? You after, sure? Yeah, after this. We'll okay, let's have a little, just a little bite right. before we go back. So, yeah, we'll okay. be back. See you in the studio. So we are back in the studio and uh, changed. Yeah, changed. we've changed. You know the photos I took in there and then yeah. I posted on social media, on, okay. on Weibo, Facebook, because I have quite different different accounts. Yes. Uh, we garnered quite a few likes. I mean, well, about 500 likes. Okay. Well, it's uh, not did bad, they say right? anything? They said, oh, you guys look nice. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't comment on, on the food that I post. You know what the food that I post, maybe, is I'm not very good with my, my photo skills. I don't get a lot of likes on my food. It's always selfie. Of my face. Sorry. Yeah, I, I like the uh, I like the costume. You know, you know, being yeah, the emperor nice. and yeah. the emperor. So then the question becomes: Without the gimmick, will it survive? So that's exactly the question hmm. we'd like to ask you. And when we talk about these Wang Hong restaurants, the first question is: Why do they become a Wang Hong restaurant? The way people consume nowadays, it's a social thing. Uh, how we consume things, we're very we have a very short attention span. And we consume things very quickly with mobile phones, with the internet. And in order to catch the attention of people with spending power, mm. you have to either do something that's really good, which takes time to build up, or something really wacky. If I think about it from a chef perspective, is that I can make really good tasting food, but you can't taste from the photo. No. <laughs> right? You can't you can't you can only imagine what it tastes like, but especially for myself who does fusion food, you cannot even tell what you're about to eat through the photos. So now like for me it's a debate like do I make food taste really good or do I make it look really pretty? The end result could look really nice or a lot of us right now we actually go back to the basic. We make it as neutral and as simple as possible. Exactly. Do you Something, think there's a yeah. negative connotation with the word Wang Hong? Generally, for me, the the Wang Hongness of a restaurant or a concept uh, means that it's bad. Because what happens if it's a viral concept or something that's really creative, but it actually tastes good? Can that be considered Wang Hong? Okay. Maybe it's it's, it's more period, about right? the word Wang Hong itself. It has yes. some negative. negative implications in it, or 
I think so. Okay. And, and like any trend, the Wang Hong trend. Doesn't last long. It doesn't last long, like the places itself, but also maybe the idea of Wang Hong itself. It will die out like anything else. But there have been replacement words, for example, Da Ka, which is like check in. Mm -hmm. So a place where you can just Da Ka or check in, and that, that's it. That's all you do. It's Again, just this one. is more about the lifestyle mm. of the younger generation. Not much about food, right? What no. you care most about. <laughs> no, not at all. Like, I, I, I was shocked when I come here learning about these terms, which I had no clue of before. I just hide myself in the kitchen. I just cook, <laughs> hoping that they will be accepted by guests. And then all of a sudden, I have my marketing team, my PR team coming. Oh, we have Wang Hong coming to eat. We have food bloggers coming to eat. Oh, we have to take them. But, oh, they don't eat a lot of the food that you're making. I'm like... Can you then, make some fries? Then <laughs> what's the point of them coming? It's like, oh, but they have a lot of publicity to, you know, to, to bring the name to the restaurant, of the restaurant to the public. You know, it's, it's great. Uh, and like, but they don't want to eat half of our menu. Do, do I want these guys? So I, I, when I think about it is that like for all these sort of marketing tools that are coming up in the current age groups of younger kids, it's for certain types of restaurants and then for other types like myself, I would use other ways to attract or, or create mm. the, the sensations for mm. people. You know, I, I use stories about mm. why I use the ingredients. I talk about a, a ancient techniques of how I cook this, you know, mm. that comes from centuries away in China. And maybe one of those mm. ancient imperial methods of cooking a chicken, I take that and then I make that into a modern dish. Okay. Those are the ones that I will use as my marketing. Now, you consider that Wong Hong strategy, maybe if the Wong Hong feel that that was attractive for them. But if it doesn't, then it's okay for me. It's I will attract your... other people who yeah. will appreciate the story. Hey, I just remember the first, when I first got to China, my, my girlfriend is my wife now. Her and her friend said, you got to go to Heidi Lao. It's like the coolest hot pot ever. I had hot pot before. Mm. I said, what makes it cool? And they said, everyone goes there. I'm like, that's why it's cool? Okay. <laughs> and they have a guy that does noodles like this. Yes. Yeah, and I've so been there. Perfect I went example. there. We stay in line for three hours eating sunflower seeds outside because <laughs> they give you sunflower seeds. And <laughs> you, get like, you, get a little, you get some tea and you sit at these small benches. And then finally they call your number. And I'm starving to death. And we go in. Finally we can eat. And then the noodle guy comes and does noodle. And, like, and then, okay, that's pretty cool. I recorded that. I've never seen a noodle guy throwing noodles into mm. the pot from, you know, you know what in I'm talking about? And he's spinning yeah. around. Yes. And, yeah. That was cool. Once. And then I, I recorded it, sent it to my friends in Canada, and they said, wow, that's so cool. And I said, it was good. The food was fine. Not sure I want to wait three hours in line again to see the noodle guy. I mean, there's but, other good things but, about but, the but you can all, Next the time you can call them delivery. Oh, I know. But they don't can. send the guy yeah. with the noodle thing. Like, they, they, don't they, don't can. Can. they can't. They can't. They can't. They can't. But the queuing thing is also part of being a Wang Hong restaurant. Yeah, yeah, they want the queue. They want the queue. There's a queue. Those are the features, right? The features are long queues. Or a lot of common Eating at a restaurant is bragging that you survive the world. Some weird names and some... Uh, maybe one or two products which are extremely ex successful. Right. Haiti. And yeah. But, I mean, uh. Haiti Lao is still there. Yeah, because some of the restaurants more. are still there. The food but many of them are gone. Mm. So again, it comes back, you know, and you guys were asking the question, how's the food? So right. that's the essential thing, right? How's the food? That really uh, is the uh, key element of whether or not the restaurant is going to uh, develop further or yeah. survive, actually, in, in the end. Yeah, I mean, I recently went to this Wang Hong restaurant, yeah. and it's, you know, it's quite popular online. I'm not going to name the restaurant. Mm -hmm. I was quite excited, you know, people were taking photos of it. I went yeah. there. The first thing I noticed of a restaurant is whether it's clean or not. I think for a restaurant, Ooh. it has to be clean. Hygienic is very important to me because yeah. someone's serving you food. You want to know, you can, it's a bit, you know, a half-open kitchen. I can see a little bit, not, not a full-size mm -hmm. kitchen, but you can see a little bit. It's not clean. Yeah, you can't see her. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you know what I mean. For me, it's yeah. it's it's the hygiene. It's yes, you can take nice photos, but it's more th and it's beyond that. And then I get the food served, right? Hot pot. Yeah. It's just not very good. I can make better than that, you know, at home. And I'm it's, I'm a terrible cook. So if all guests are like you, I think uh, a lot more restaurants that are actually putting effort into making good food, uh, not because to become a home, but just to make. Food yeah. tastes good for Just the to people. make good food, I think. You know, we, yeah. we would survive better. But sometimes I, I do very, feel very stressful, mm. you know, um, with all of these media, Wong Hong thing. We have mm. to compete with them. Mm. It, it is a stress. It is a stress because our, our 
Chujong, was that in English? Um, motive yeah. of ha having a restaurant is not to become a place of Dakar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a place to serve something interesting, something tastes good, something that gives you a memory that lasts. Mm. You know, years from now, even if you say, oh, your restaurant is too expensive for me to come back every single month, you know, maybe three years down the road, I was like, oh, I've had something at this place. And it had a really interesting item in there. Mm. That that's enough for me. Mm. That's really enough for a lot of us as chefs. So, um, uh, Dale, let yeah. me ask you this question: Do you also make some Wang Kong food as well? I've never tried, but why not? I think I can experiment with it. The request is very simple. We are going to work together. Make okay. some Wang Kong food with our help. <laughs> Sounds uh, like so a plan. Well, in the end, it's. You know, we work together <laughs> yeah. with the Michelin chef and... Um, you guys will be my Wong Hong of the day. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Well. But before that, before <laughs> we start, and thank you, thank you, uh, Rachel, Daniel, for coming to the studio. So, well, this is a little treat. <laughs> Some right. cheesecake. Yes. Uh, is it also a Wong Hong? It's not a Wong Hong restaurant, um, but dessert itself is kind of like a Wong Hong. It's very, it's highly Wong popular. Food, yeah. Wong Hong food. It's highly okay. popular on, on all these social media. People love to take photos of dessert. Oh, yes. But, but whether they eat it or not, I don't know. They take photos, <laughs> and maybe that's it. But I'm going to go ahead and eat it. It looks so delicious. So we're not At going to right, take right? any photos, but we're going to eat. We're yes. going to eat it first. It's a large piece, though. We can get a photo here. <laughs> oh, it looks delectable. Yeah, we'll see you, you uh, with the... Um, nice. This well, is like my annual Yeah, we'll back. Uh, yeah. Welcome back to the studio. Welcome back to the studio, and now we're going to be a Michelin chef ourselves. Too. <laughs> no, not really, we're, but we're, we're going to work with it, Yael. So uh, we've been Hold talking on. about this Instagrammable food and restaurant. So sure. what are we going to make? Today I'm actually remaking a version of Kung Pao chicken. Yeah. Now, Kung Pao chicken, you will have a really nice aromatic sauce, and then you have some very freshly walked uh, chicken pieces and some vegetables. But today, you're not going to see any one of them. It's going to be really great. But the yeah. Instagrammable part today is that I'm going to make nitrogen ice cream. <laughs> Would you like to help me pour the oh, nitrogen Oh, yes, in? that I can do. Okay. <laughs> okay, so we'll let it blend, but uh, pour very slowly yep. now. A special <laughs> equipment for the special occasion. <laughs> so what I do... So you just warm the side of the bowl. Oh. Should I take the picture for you oh, guys? Yes. Please. Yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I feel like it's like meat flavored ice cream. Oh, is it? We were gonna plate yeah. the dish. So the next one I have is this item here. It's very that? interesting. Chrome is actually a root vegetable readily found in uh, Zhejiang area. Would you like to try one? <coughs> no. <laughs> wow. It almost is a bit like pickle, but it has there's a bit of um, spiciness wait, wait, to wait. it. We have to do this. Where's the camera? One, two. Mmm. It's a bit spicy. Yes, a little bit. Oh, it is vinegar. vinegar. It is a Sichuan inspired mm. dish, yeah. so we have to have a little bit of spiciness in it. Then the next part is very finely cut and then dried chili thread. Some people will ask, oh, why does Michelin chef always make the plate look so nice? Yeah. There's always a little bit of micro mm. garnish to just give it an extra color mm. element. Yeah. Mm. Lastly, this item. Does it have to be three mm. spots or it can be four? We like odd numbers. Mm. It's just kind of our thing. Okay. Mm. But um, this would wow. be the complete dish. Home Paul Scallop. Okay. So let's take a picture. picture, picture, picture. Right. Yeah, selfie. Yeah, yes. yeah. yeah. So this is Insta worthy, right? Uh, yeah. Because it has let colors, me, let me, right? Let me, let me yes. do it. It's a Michelin. But you have to be you in have it. You have to be in it. So okay. we got we got all okay. the um in, we got That's all the everything. elements, right? We have the chef. We have the mm -hmm. beautiful plates. All the colors. All right, and we're on the show. Cheese. So um. Thank you again for watching this Thank episode, you. and we'll say goodbye to you because we're gonna taste. Yeah, it. see you bye next bye. time. Bye. bye. Time to eat. Okay. Nice. Okay. Let me try. I want to try the ingredients separately. Mm. So I want to try the ice cream separately. Wait, the ice cream is kind of a salty, sweet. Mm. Oh, it's good. It's yeah. like a mix of um.